Greetings, I'm Bashar. Oh, thank, how are you? Thank you, Bashar, for coming. Such an honor. It is my pleasure to come to you. How are you today? Uh, oh, um, mixed, mixed, but wonderful. Thank you. Nice ride. You are welcome. And how are you? I am very well, thank you. Very well. Thank you. I just listened to you today. I know. <laughs> what is it that you want to know today? There are questions on your mind. Um, you start, I guess, yeah. Um, what's happening with the world? There are still many things that I have said that will happen that are yet to happen. They have been slightly delayed, but they are still coming. So the world is not in such a good shape right at the moment, at least not your part of the world. Mm -hmm. Your elections will have great ramifications on the fabric of your society. Also, there will be other things that are happening. There, you are well overdue for seismic activity in your part of the world, but we are trying to keep it to a minimum if possible. These things, if they were to happen naturally without the help of others, would be disastrous beyond the problem. But, yes, a seismic occurrence of 1904 would have happened, but now we are praying that it will be less than that with the work that we have done and others have done as well. We have set into effect some vortexes along the shoreline to keep it from falling into the ocean and keep it from being extremely unstable. There has been openings of vortexes in the Pacific Ocean as well. Thank you for all that work and thank you for the update. Well, we did not do it all. Mm -hmm. There was other civilizations and alien help that was necessary. Your Gurkfiknir people were mainly responsible for the original work. But they have moved far away and they needed someone of a higher dimension to help at this time because they did not want to enter the fourth dimensional energy vortex or whatever you want to call the particular thing that is going through your focus. Thank you, thank you. Um, what is um, your take on the development of human colony community? It is like any other community. There will be ups and downs, but it continues to grow. And so therefore it is still in many ways very healthy. Do you have any suggestions, advice? What shall we do? We kind of are in uh, intellectual crisis. We are waiting for the society to be more receptive because you know, we told the, each of us, we told each, each other everything we know, and now we are waiting, basically. The thing is, they are all using it for their own personal needs. Each one has their own personal needs, and they're using it in particular ways to help themselves. You see, they are, since it's an open format, open format, they are using it to help themselves and some of them are using it to help others but they are not looking at it as a united community in many respects they have their friendships they have their their ideas of what they want to see they like some of the channeling etc etc it's a safe place to hang out no one is really combative unless they want to unless they want to be but those that are combative together are enjoying the combat so it is not like there is anything extremely negative going on they are ex experimenting with their free will with their intellects 
and with their spirituality. And therefore, I do not see that it is in any major problem. You see, there are so many people in human colony now, you are only dealing with a handful. Uh, my question is about the external perspective. What is expected of us? What are the opportunities for us externally? What shall we do? What could be our goal? What, uh, what is coming? What is in the works on <laughs> between the aliens? How can we be more involved? The very name human colony will just will cause some people not to want to join. The very name human colony. They say it. They say, "Oh, that doesn't sound like what anything that I would want to do." <laughs> or be a part of. But as you move forward, it will bring in those that are necessary for you to grow. There is nothing for you to do at this time. There is no way to enhance what is already there because what it says and what it is is fairly self-explanatory. Once they come in and read the introduction, hear the introduction, and uh, move about a little bit. It's more self-explanatory than you think. And if they don't like what they see, they immediately leave. But there, if you have noticed, which I have, <laughs> your enrollment has gone up actually pretty quickly lately. Hmm. You did not notice. No. You had several people within the last month join or ask to join Human Colony. Oh, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. I, uh, I didn't. I, I'm more looking, than usual. Yeah, more I, than usual. I'm looking at number of views and number of views goes down. They will go back up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Jim is popular, of course. But. Uh, it's same people, same thing over and over. It's like I don't see new tasks. Basically, the problem is people came to us hoping to be taken to the ship. <laughs> yeah. And it didn't happen it, physically. It didn't happen physically. So, so what is the new message for us? We are a channeling community delivering channeled messages and training channelers. Is there yeah. anything else to do? There is much to do. You are training Reiki, you are training channelers, this, and you, unbeknownst to you, or maybe it is something you know, you are training leaders, and this is what is important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Leadership is important. The future has leadership that is not what you are looking for. As you see your leaders, your current electing officers, are these the kind of leaders that you're looking for? I do not think so. Um, what is so that? therefore, mm -hmm. you will be building leaders with some spiritual character and some positive base for what they are about to do. Mm -hmm. Some of these will enter politics, some will not, but some will be thrust into it in some ways. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, what is happening with the uh, um, hybridization program? Many things. There are those coming here to your planet, and they're already here, mm -hmm. to look to see if the hybridization program is good enough or in a good enough acceptance to become part of your society. You know about this, correct? Uh, yeah, you mentioned that. So some of them are already here. They are already looking. They are already making assessments of your society right now. Now, I do not think that the assessments are that high for hybridization within the planet or with on the planet, but there are some places that are very acceptable and other places that are not. 
this is what they need to know in order for first contact also. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do not talk about these things on air because people have misconstrued ideas about what first contact is going to be. But remember, it is going to be it's something for the whole world to view. So what is the misconception? Um, what people think? People think that there will be some uh, global announcement, right? What's it, there will be, but not the way they think. There will be, but it will not be the way they think it will be. At least not some of them. Some of them are on the right path. But some of them are not. Most of them are not. They think that it will be, it will happen, and everything will be uh, hunky dory, and nothing will come of it except for people will uh, accept universally what they, what aliens have to say. This is not going to happen. Okay. There is it's not going to be agreement about who the aliens are, why they're here, et cetera, et cetera. And there's going to be much turmoil at that time. And I know they speak of it in a very positive way, in a very positive way. But you have to understand they are expecting much turmoil and much uh, oppression and uh, much, uh, many things to come up against them at this time. All right. So that's why it has to be, the time must be chosen for the least amount of aggression. Right. For the least amount of aggression because so many would have them immediately destroyed. In my book, I write uh, that the best time for the that for that to have minimal amount of damage is to uh, piggyback your contact to any big event like a big disaster so if any big disaster happens like economic crisis or a big war or a uh, nature disaster if you the thing is listen carefully yeah if that were to happen, we would come at that time, they would expect that we would help them with this crisis. We cannot save humanity. Humanity must save itself. And if we come at a time of great crisis, then we will be expected to help. And if we do not help, we will be looked at in a negative way. We can help in some small ways but we cannot save your existence. The universal law says, if you cannot save yourself, God has not wished that your existence continue. Therefore, we could not come at a time like this because we would be expected to be very humane, and we could be in some senses. We could help the people, but we would not be able to stop the war, not be able to stop the disaster. But we could minister, if you will, right. to the peoples. But basically... Which could be a good thing, yes. Basically, you will not be responsible for the big disaster when you do the, the contact, because people's minds will be not on the aliens, so... Whatever you do would not cause an additional wave. It would be just noticed, but not cause a big wave. It wouldn't be amplified. The thing is also, you have, they, they will say, look, they're coming now after they caused this disaster. They, will, they definitely will believe that we did cause it because we're coming at your weakest point. You see that, that. We cannot come at a weak point for your society because that will give us too much power. 
that will give us the image that we caused it and that we are here to take over. And that is, is not what we want. Okay, at least you heard my idea. All right, yeah. uh, next question is, um, are you talking that hybridization program looks for locations on Earth for doing the hybridization? We are looking for, well, it is several things, several things, not just one thing about the hybridization program. It is, is it safe for them to come? Where are the safest places for them to come? Will they be accepted universally? Will they be able to thrive on Earth in many ways? Will they be able to interact with humanity in a way that will be socially acceptable. There are many things that are being looked at, and that is just the beginning. That's the first phase of the understanding. The second phase goes into the mindset of the hybrid, hybrid children and hybrid species of how they will interact and who they are within the society. There are many, many things to really look at. How, how are they prepared? What is the training for hybrids before they um, come down? They must learn the language. They must learn the culture that they will be living in, plus several other cultures around the planet because they may have to move. You understand? There are certain places that will be more acceptable than other places. And right. so the, the first place that they are may not be their permanent spot. Mm -hmm. They may have to move other places. And so they will have to learn about the different cultures that these particular areas of acceptance are. And so they will have to learn the language, the culture, and understand what the people are like and why they do the things they do, traditions and things of this nature. Also, they will bring their own traditions with them, of course, but they will not necessarily share them with humans unless humans want to understand them. And this is just the beginning. How long is the typical visit of a hybrid? What is the range? I would say one to five years. Ah, and it's already started. What has started is that the, they are looking to see what areas are acceptable. What areas that they believe that the hybrids will be able to live in comfortably without persecution where they would be accepted the greatest. So therefore, they are looking at the earth as a whole and finding the places to start the hybridization process or to bring those that are already hybrids to the planet and start the process of hybridization on the planet. I see. Um, we have been warned by our friends from uh, Andromeda that excessive outbreeding would cause uh, uh, problems to the whole system, to the whole system, physical and etheric. This is true, absolutely. But prophecy has foreseen many of these things. I do believe in the prophecies, that they have many times been fairly accurate. And so they say that your planet will be very helpful to the universe and the galaxies all around. So I am thinking that we will not overdo it, or should I say they will not overdo it. They will understand the process and understand what has to be done to maintain a good balance. So, what is the danger of out? So, outbreeding basically is too many genes coming into the genetic pool of Earth, like too many aliens. So, Earth loses its own integrity. Earth humans look, look, use their the own integrity as a civilization. So, what is the mechanism? Why would it be happening? 
Why is it bad? Let me explain something to you. First of all, Earth is a, a melting pot of many species. Many different species have already become part of Earth's process. You understand that? Yes. They are already part of who you are. Inbreeding within the the ga near galaxy will not hurt that because many of these civilizations already are part of your civilization, and they would just be getting a greater immune system, a greater white cell count, a greater blood balancing, a greater thought process, many things. But those that are not part of the Earth melting pot, those are the ones they are concerned about. And they will not be the ones that will be part of the hybridization program. Only those that are already part of your past hybridization process. Mm -hmm. Now, those that are not part of your original hybridization process are going to benefit by the hybridization, the blood, the DNA from humans put into them, but they are not going to breed with humanity, or they are not going to give their blood to be part of the hybridization program. They are already aware of who is in your blood and who and what species are able to be able to hybridize with you safely and with good benefit. That is why the, the pro program was set up in the first place, to check out these things and to make sure that hybridization was possible and was Positive. Okay. So how many hybrids are already coming down like in a new wave? Are there like few already started or is it still There's, in the preparation? It is still in preparation because of course you are, your people do not accept hybrids yet or even know most of your people do not even know what hybrids are at this time. So it is still in preparation. There are three planets in the Pleiades that house the entire uh, Gurkfreknir hybridization program. Mm -hmm. They are Maya, Era, and Palana. Mm -hmm. And these three planets have all the hybrid, well, plus some of the saucers and sh ships and things of that nature also have hybridized children and families. But those, those three planets are the basis for, for the hybridization program as it exists at the sky in the Gurkhuk near space. Um, are we talking about tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of hybrids? Not that many at this time. Right now there may be a thousand. Or a little more. There are, there are more coming, of course. Many, uh, as they continue to uh, breed and uh, hybridize, more are coming and more are coming. But right now there's a, like 1180, I think. But that is from only from Gurkvik Nier that we are talking. Hmm. Yeah, my estimate was much bigger. Yes, it will be much bigger. But we would like to still see that it comes to the Earth. The Earth is important for this. Just based on the popularity of the uh, abductee support program, yes. there were great many abductees in, uh, in Western countries. There were great many abductees. My estimates were much bigger. If each abductee has at but least one child. Hybrid. But they were not all hybridized. There was many abductions, but they were not all hybridized. The reason for that is because most of these abductions, abductions were to find out what was in the blood so they could start hybridization. So they needed a huge amount of 
abductees to check out the blood and DNA of the civilization. So what would be the typical experiences of hybrids coming down? Are they coming in secret or they, they would be coming in open? At, at first, they would be coming in semi-secret and then they would be slowly exposed to the rest of society. How, how would they feel? What do the hybrids feel when they come to Earth? All of them that, are vegetarians, right? That we do not know yet. That is part of what we must find out. We know how they felt when they went to Palana, Era, and um, Maya, but we do not know how they will feel on Earth. Those planets were much more open to them coming. This planet is, is going to be a more of experimental time for them. So we do not know exactly how they will feel. So are they coming from fourth dimension to third dimension? Some. Some will come from third, fourth to third. A few are already in third, and there are a few from fifth dimension. But most are in fourth, you are correct. So they lose their telepathy or don't they? It will change. They will not lose it completely. But with the density, there will be changes, yes. Uh, how would be their health? Would they survive the Earth's uh, infections and stuff? And pollution? They will be put in an area where they will be safe from different things. And they will be able to survive longer than the 39 days that would originally... The, you see, a fourth dimension can come to third dimension almost indefinitely because they came from that area and moved up through evolution. So they can come back to third dimension, but after 39 or 40 days, they feel a little groggy, a little different. They're, the density is so different that it affects them mentally more than anything else. It will not affect their physicality. However, we are going to give them much... Uh, what is the word? Give it a while. We are giving them the equalization to be able to survive <laughs> for one to five years on this planet so that they will be able to understand what it is like to be here, what kind of people are here, the, understand the density from their density. They will not be able to live here indefinitely, that is for sure, because they were born into the fourth or fifth density. Unless they were actually born into third density, they could not stay here indefinitely. Uh-huh. So I think best settlements would be in uh, monasteries and universities, because both have sort of protected environment, both monasteries and universities. And also some corporations also uh, might welcome them. Some corporations would welcome uh, hybrids with their knowledge and uh, welcome their uh, talents. Yes, uh, we have looked into that and we'll look into it even farther. So are you think but thinking... Of course, that we... remember this. We are not the only ones looking in into this. The Chukani, the Gurkfiknir group, uh, Ashtar Command is also looking into this in some ways. Also the Council of Nine and several other groups are looking into this because it is part of what should be part of your future. Are you talking about uh, creating se special settlements with protected environment or just planting individual aliens or individual hybrids into human society? No. They will become settlements, but but the, more than that, they will eventually do won't have a need for the settlement any longer. They will uh, be part of society. They will blend into the society at large. Would they keep their talents like um, 
uh, supernatural abilities uh, in, in our Most terms. Like they will be affected, of course they will, but they will keep a good deal of their properties. But the density will cause some of them to be a lot less. Like shape shifting, levitating. That will be more difficult, yes. I see. And it will probably not be recommended for the first couple years. Ah. I was thinking it would be very handy first. If they get attacked, they could shape, shape shift or levitate or uh, well, do telekinetic things. They don't, when one is in defense mode, they will do what they need to do. <laughs> They, they need to be taught self-defense classes. We can teach them. Yes. Human colony can, can help. <laughs> yes. In terms of self-defending without harming others. It is why I speak to you now. Is that you your human colony is unique. And you may not think it is balanced but it will always be there from now on it will not be destroyed wonderful thank you it is something that will continue it has many people that are very solid at its base how, how do you feel about communicating with new new presidents uh, if each of them is uh, elected are they already briefed and uh, open to the ideas to communicate with uh, aliens. They are very well. I did not know that you were not aware that when they hacked Hillary Clinton's files, they found evidences that she had been communicating with aliens or there was information about aliens in there. Um, I'm talking more about, are you now in some, some sort of prepared to more actively communicate to them? Um, question is, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty really sure Cl Clinton want, uh, Hillary wants, Hillary wants to develop, because how about the other one? How, what's his name? I don't remember his name, but the bad guy. Yes, he is not as aware as Hillary. Hillary is much more aware of all the things that are happening because she's been in politics for a very long time. She has seen aliens for herself and would like to divulge that they exist and thinks that it is high time for disclosure. <coughs> but the other one is is very third dimensional and does not really know about aliens as much. So what do you think he will be open to? Because he's an opportunist, I think that's the word. He takes opportunities. So I think yes, it would be exciting for him. It's thrilling for him to, to talk to you guys. Only if, only if we make it promising for him. Right. I would... I uh, urge you to ma make uh, plans for that and be prepared whenever there is an opportunity to offer him some benefits. You think he will win the election? Oh, I don't know. I, have, I, I don't follow that. It's, 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 you know, it's depressing. It is, but important. You must keep aware of all the different candidates if you are to vote. I will vote for Hillary. That's okay. But, uh, Very well. but I think I the rest is just, it drains me. When I start following it, it just drains me. I hate it. At least you are voting for someone that is able to do the office. Right. We see who will win. And it is interesting. You will see. I cannot divulge any more information. Uh, so what do you think about Russia? What is happening with Russia? Because of your one candidate, they are starting to look favorably upon Russia, even though it is 
a deception of sorts. But, of course, he has said that if Hillary wins, they will not be happy. But if the other wins, they will be happy. But this is a deception because he will be played by the governments of other countries because he is unaware of how politics works in other cultures. Hmm. Uh, I'm more interested in, um, in learning about alien connections of Russia. What's uh, are they under jurisdiction of different aliens like greys or no uh, reptilians? I think right. So, is there reptilian uh, activity going on? There was a strong reptilian presence, mm -hmm. but it is not as strong right now because Putin has changed and discovered the influence. Ah. Isn't Putin under the influence of himself? He was, but not any longer. Wow. Is, is it the same body or did they replace him? No, it is the same body. Wow. So is there any positive development with Russia? I mean, there is, there is so many uh, spiritual people there. Uh, how is the development? It is going well. I cannot tell you about all the things about Russia because that is not for you to know. But the thing is for right now to keep your focus on the United States. That is where the real problems are. Ah. Any new problems or the same kind of problems? New and the same. Ah. Yeah, I'm I'm reading about Einstein and um, and Gandhi and Churchill. Yeah. And until now, I was thinking that, you know, there was a big global conspiracy. And Churchill, for sure, had to be a part of global conspiracy. But as I read the biographies, I discover that all of them, each of them made so many mistakes that they don't yeah. seem... seem they don't seem to have been guided by any conspiracy. They seem to be as lost no. as others. No, they were not guided by conspiracy. Your people on the side of Churchill were guided by their own thoughts and logic, whereas those from Hitler's side were guided by aliens in some senses. The Nords were behind much. You saw the Aryan race that you that they want to to, pro, to be the product. This is what the Nords look like. Uh -huh. This is the technology of the Nords. The Nords were giving them information on how to win the war, on how to be more to create a world of. Uh, Aryan species of many things of this nature. There was much secrets. Also, a, a lot of documents were destroyed at this time. Mm -hmm. And so, the full truth about what was happening during that war will probably never be But the, the Nords were behind a lot of their technology they had to discover it for themselves, but they gave them the technology to study mm -hmm. so they could discover it for themselves. Uh huh. So Hitler was guided. Uh, how about Mussolini? No, not the same thing. How about Japanese? No, not the same thing. Only Hitler that I know of was guided by aliens at some point. Was Stalin talking to aliens? Yes. He was... had alien visitations, yes. But he didn't have much support? No. Uh, they were the... not supporting him. The aliens actually did not like Stalin very much. <laughs> uh, when uh, Hitler uh, invaded Russia, Stalin panicked 
and uh, was sitting in the bunker waiting to be arrested for a long time. I don't remember exactly, but I think more than two weeks he was absent. He was sure they are coming for him. Was he aware that Hitler is yes. guided by the aliens? I think that, the, let me put it this way. He was aware to some point that there was something behind what was happening more than humans. Mm -hmm. He was told this by some of the aliens, but of course he was a very stubborn man and he was very, very against what they had to say. And so he sort of disregarded the aliens, even though he knew that they were greater than himself. Uh-huh. But he dis disregarded them, and they didn't did not help him at all. Ah, I see. Did he had a, a contract with the devil? No. His biography Is shows it said that he had one. The, yeah, his biography shows a critical point when he was close to death in. A, in a northern prison, in a northern settlement, imprisoned. And at that point, he was abandoned by all his friends. And at that time, he denounced his previous ideals, communist ideals. And after that, he behaved like guided by the devil. So there is, and there is a lot of kind of sus suspicion in Russian culture that he was making a contract with, a, with some supernatural force. So it would be either aliens or... Yeah, those would be aliens those were the aliens he was in contact with aliens and he did not know that they were aliens in the sense he always thought that they were demonic ah but he always thought that they were something other than they were and so he did not listen to them for a good deal of time but the, at that point he had no recourse but he still did not like them or and they didn't he did not really listen to them that much. He may have said that he had contact with them, but he did not really listen to what they had to say. Otherwise, he would have been much more successful. He was successful in a way. I in see. a way, but only because... But he would have been much, much greater... Had a much greater success if, had he listened to them. And uh, my last question is about our current state of conspiracies. I was, um, for many years, I was thinking, for seven years, I was thinking that our world is governed by conspirators who are very powerful. And just after reading the biographies of Churchill, Gandhi, and Einstein, I was, I'm thinking maybe we are not. Maybe it's all more like uh, divine guided process than uh, than really human conspirators I cannot comment on that at this time I must be going that's okay thank you very much for the time and answers and the uh, uh, visit I really appreciate you you speaking with us thank you I am it is great to be here with you much love much love. Hello. Hey, Jim. Welcome back. Hi. How are you? Wonderful. Oh. Did you have a good session? Yeah, wonderful session. Thank you. Oh, good. Glad to hear that. Whew. Toward the end there, he got really weak, whoever that was. 
<laughs> it was Bashar. Bashar, very weak. 